Beyond Sex, Pizza and the Brain Taxi, Embodied Learning Development and HR. So this is based on a talk that I gave for the Central London CRPD uh, to HR people and trainers there. Start with a couple of quotes. This is what you'll get from this slideshow. So an overview of the embodied way of doing things, a couple of models and possibly some personal insight. I tend to think of HR as simply a cognitive manner, simply using the brain and maybe the hand, and the rest of the body is not really involved. It's a general way of thinking about it. Same with learning, again, it's about our brains and our bodies just kind of sit there, fall asleep. You know, in school, we all sat, in, sat at desks in rows, not really using our bodies, and that's the general model still in the corporate world. My claim, however, is that these things aren't just in our heads. We actually need a lot more than our, our heads to do HR learning leadership effectively. So I'm really talking about embodiment. Embodiment just means being aware of your body and being aware of it as part of who you are. So um, this is how we live in and as bodies, not the size or shape of body, but posture, movement and intention. When you look at some well-known leaders here from business and politics, who they are comes across from their bodies. It's, it's, it's very obvious from the way they walk into a room. So when I want to talk about the body, I'd like to clarify, I'm not talking about the body athletic or the body aesthetic. So the body's really been reduced to a kind of consumerist sex object in the Western world. And we usually only think about it when we're tired, hungry, horny. That's about it. The rest of the time, it's just a, a cart that carries our head around. My claim, however, is the body is an integral part of all these other things. And as you'll see, they're all pretty, um, pretty essential for HR leadership and training. I'm not talking about body language, but body being. So not some inauthentic gestures that a politician's learned, but about who we are as people. I think this is really important at the moment uh, for the kind of change and stress a lot of people are under. This is essential. And also the idea of bringing heart back into business, the idea of business with a soul, conscious business. It's a way of doing any kind of L&D, so you can apply this to any area, it's highly interactive. Um, my clients tend to like it because it goes deep very quickly and it sticks. Yeah? People remember what they do much more than they remember a, uh, a PowerPoint slide. So you can think of it as a kind of transformational learning. So it's not just learning about something, or even learning skills acquisition, learning to do something, but learning to be something. So, if, for example, in management, you can read about management, uh, you can uh, learn how to give an appraisal, but learning to be a different kind of manager is quite different. Here on the slides, analogy of French. So, speaking French is quite different from having a French way of being. The body's relevant to all these areas. Some of them are obvious, like stress, you know, it's obviously a physical thing leadership presence, communication, how we come across. Um, even others like time management though that seem, um, seem very cognitive, you know, you can read books on time management, but that's actually not enough is what I've found. Because if you have a physical, emotional block, if you have a way of being that can't say no or ask for help, then it doesn't matter about all the theories. Some more applications here. And I'd ask you now to think, how does this apply to you and your job? How is the body relevant to, to what you do? It really starts with self-reflection, it starts with self-observation, self-knowledge. Ask yourself, what do you embody? We use lots of different models. Here's a basic one we use based on uh, Daniel Goldman's model of emotional intelligence, uh, looking at self and other uh, awareness and management. We also do a lot of work with centering, which is a way to get yourself together under pressure. It's a quick win on a lot of our courses. Work with yin and yang, two fundamental ways of being, shown here beautifully by, by my friends in Poland. We work with the uh, I, we and it. So this is the first, second and third person, how that plays out in the body. People tend to have a preference towards one of those. We use uh, typologies like the four elements. We do an embodied version of Ocean and Myers-Briggs. The five pillars, this is our work as to what really makes a person work, or what makes a body-mind work effectively. And these are the five things we found matter. And we have a model of six directions, which is um, a little bit more in depth. I'll link videos to all of these things on here. We work with predispositions. So um, people tend to get stuck in long-term moods. 
These moods are invisible to them, but very obvious to everyone else. And it means they're likely to do things and not other things. So um, we tend to think we're logical creatures, but actually these moods tend to predominate and influence our behaviour strongly. So um, use a comical example here. Tigger, no matter what happens, is happy. Eeyore, no matter what happens, is sad. Like a pair of old shoes, as I said, you've gotten used to them, but everybody else can see them. We also work with emotional intelligence and a huge range of other areas. This is just a very brief introduction. So if you're interested, uh, you can sign up for our newsletter, go to the blog, Twitter, there's some good books on this. And of course, if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll find over 50 other free videos on different areas.